Well, welcome. It is six o'clock. We'll go ahead and get, get started this evening as we just remember what Christ has done for us on the cross. Tonight's going to be a little bit different than, than what we've done before, a little bit different than what we normally do. If you didn't get a bulletin, I encourage you to grab one. If not, it'll be on the screen for you. But basically what we're going to do tonight is we're going to walk through Luke chapter 23. We'll read a section of it, then that'll lead us into a time of prayer, a time of singing. Then we've got some responsive readings that will happen tonight. So I'll, I will read one section, and then I'll ask you guys to read one section. If you're in the bulletin, it'll be the, I'll read the, the italicized portion, and you'll read the, the regular font. But I just want us to spend some time tonight reflecting on God's Word, singing songs to Him, reading together and praying together. So I'm just going to ask you, if you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. But let's just spend some time tonight really just focusing on what our Savior has done for us. Let's pray together. Father, any time we come together as your church, we recognize that you are in our midst. Father, any time we come together as your church, gathered around your word, we recognize that, that this is your time and not ours. So, Lord, we dedicate it to you. Lord, tonight, as we spend time in your word, as we spend time singing and praying and reflecting, would you just help us, Lord, to focus on you, to focus on the, the great need that we have for your salvation. And Lord, we just thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. This is the word of the Lord from Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 1. Then their whole assembly rose up and brought him before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, we found this man misleading our nation, opposing payment of taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Pilate then told the chief priests and the crowds, If I find no grounds for charging this man, I find no grounds for charging this man, but they kept insisting, He stirs up people teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee where he started even to here. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man was a Galilean. Finding that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who is also in Jerusalem during those days. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. For a long time he had wanted to see him because he had heard about him and was hoping to see some miracle performed by him. So he kept asking him, questions, but Jesus did not answer him. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt, mocked him, dressed him in bright clothing, and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Previously, they had been enemies. As we respond to this text in prayer, I just want us to consider Jesus and his ministry. Consider the false accusations that are leveled against Jesus here by the scribes and the Pharisees. But I also want us to consider just for a moment the ways that, that we have rejected Jesus' teaching like they have. To repent of those and ask God for his forgiveness. Would you pray with me? Lord, as we see the testimony, Lord, of the, the way that, you, that your son was tried. Lord, as we see those mocking and saying all kinds of false things against our Savior. Lord, we are grieved, but Lord, we also know that, Lord, without your grace, without your spirit, that we have done the same. Lord, in our flesh, we have rejected the good teaching that you have given us. Lord, that we have sinned against you. Lord, for the lies that we have told, forgive us. For the ways that, that we have gone astray and let others forgive us. Father, would you just remind us of the goodness of Jesus. Remind us of the truth of his teaching. And remind us, Lord, of the way that he showed us you. The way that he shows us your kingdom and calls us to be a part. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. It's his name we pray. 
Amen. This is a song called Man of Sorrows that reminds us of our Savior. Man of sorrows, Lamb of God, by His own betrayed the sin of man, the wrath of God has been on Jesus slain. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned, bowing to the Father's will, he took the crown of thorns. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Sent of heaven, God's own Son, to purchase and Reconcile the very ones who nailed him to that tree. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out. Hallelujah, praise and honor unto Thee. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where Your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Praise and honor unto Thee. Join me as we read a section of Psalm 51 as David repents of his sin. David writes this, Be gracious to me, God, according to Your faithful love. According to Your abundant compassion, blot out my rebellion. Read with me. Completely wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sins. For I am conscious of my rebellion and my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right when you pass sentence. You are blameless when you judge. Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. Surely you desire integrity in the inner self. You teach me wisdom deep within. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out my guilt. Create, create a clean heart for me, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. Then I will teach the rebellious your ways and sinners will return to you. This is the word of the Lord. As we continue in Luke 23, Luke writes this. Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people. And said to them, you have brought me this man 
as one who misleads people. But in fact, after examining him in your presence, I have found no grounds to charge this man with those things you have accused him of. Neither has Herod, because he sent him back to us. Clearly has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will have him whipped and then release him. Then they all cried out together, Take this man away. Release Barabbas to us. He had been thrown into prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What has this man done wrong? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him whipped and then release him. But they kept up the pressure, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified, and their voices won out. So Pilate decided to grant their demand and release him, the one they were asking for, who had been thrown into prison for rebellion and murder. But he handed over Jesus to their will. As we pray, would you consider the crowds? These people who claim to be following God's law. The scribes and the Pharisees who claim they had the, the authority to speak into God's word, but yet they cried out to crucify the Messiah. But also consider Barabbas, this rebel murderer. Consider how, in some sense, we are like Barabbas. Jesus dying in our place not facing the penalty for the sins that we have committed, but instead receiving pardon. Would you pray with me? Lord, in this moment, Lord, hearing the crowds chanting to crucify our Lord, Father, would you, Lord, just remind us of his sacrifice. Lord, remind us of the ways that He is standing in our place. Lord, that because of His death, that He, like He took the place of Barabbas, took our place. Father, thank You for not punishing us for the crimes that we have done, for the ways that we have sinned and broken Your law. Thank You that You stood condemned in our place. Father, for the things that we've done, we are sorry and repent. Lord, help us to see the glory of your mercy. The things that you have shown to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a song we've never done before, but I hope that you will catch the tune of it and sing with me. It's called, Lord Have Mercy. For what we have done and left undone, we fall on your countless mercies for sins that are known. And those unknown, we fall on your name so holy. For envy and pride, for closing our eyes, for scorning our very neighbor. In thought, word, and deed, we failed you, our King. How deep. We need a Savior. Lord, have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. that are cold 
for seizing control, for scorning of every maker. In thought, word, and deed, we failed you, our King. How deeply we need a Savior. Lord, have mercy, Christ. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on us. Join me in reading from that great passage in the book of Romans chapter 3. Paul writes this, Now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed, attested to by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, since there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God presented Him as the mercy seat by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness because in His restraint God passed over the sins previously committed. God presented Him to demonstrate His righteousness at the present time so that He would be just and justify the one who has faith. In Jesus. This is the word of the Lord, and we thank Him for it. Continuing in Luke's Gospel. As they led Him, that is Jesus, away, they see Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country and laid the cross on Him to carry behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Him, including women who were mourning and lamenting Him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Look, the days are coming when, we will, when they will say, Blessed are the women without children, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, criminals, were also led away to be executed with him. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching. Even the leaders were scoffing. He saved others. Let him save himself. If this is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked Him. They came offering Him sour wine and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was above Him, This is the King of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at Him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered Him, rebuking Him. Don't you even fear God, since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. As we respond to this song in prayer, I want us to consider the mercy of our Savior. The mercy of Jesus who cries out to the Father to have mercy on those who have condemned Him to die. And the mercy of our Savior to, to invite one who is being punished justly for his crimes to join Him in paradise. Father, this text reminds us of the 
the faithfulness of Jesus to face the cross, but Lord, also of his mercy. The mercy which he cried out to be extended to those who were putting him to death, for they do not know what they are doing. Lord, what you intended for good, Lord, what you made for good, they, they intended for evil. Lord, as you have done throughout redemptive history, Lord, what man intends for evil, what man intends to do in sin and rebellion against you, Lord, you use for your glory and for your purposes. Lord, it was the death that Christ died which provided the means of mercy for those standing around him. Lord, thank you for the mercy that you have shown to us. Lord, as we read in Romans, Lord, that you passed over the sins previously committed, not counting our transgressions against us. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for not stopping us immediately in our sins, but Lord, having the the mercy to let us continue on until we come to know you. Lord, thank you for the deep love with which you've loved us and the mercy you have shown. Lord, help us to respond to you rightly in thanksgiving for your mercy. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. But this 
I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Read with me the great Christological hymn from Philippians chapter 2. Paul writes, adopt the same attitude that as that of Christ Jesus, who existing in the form of God did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen and amen. Continuing in Luke. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three, because the sun's light failed. The curtain of the sanctuary was split down the middle, and Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what happened, He began to glorify God, saying, This man really was righteous. All the crowds that had gathered for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, went home striking their chests. But all who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. There was a good and righteous man named Joseph, a member of the Sanhedrin, who had not agreed with their plan and action. He was from Arimathea, a Judean town, and was looking forward to the kingdom of God. He approached Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in fine linen and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock where no one had ever been placed. Then they returned and prepared spices and perfumes And they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. This is God's word. Consider the faithfulness of our King Jesus. He came as a man, leaving heaven's glory to walk the earth in human flesh like you and I. To experience the same things that you and I experience to be tempted in every way as we are. Then not only to teach and to proclaim the kingdom of God and perform various miracles, but ultimately He came to die. To give His life as a sacrifice in the place of my sins and your sins. To die the death that we deserve. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. Lord, that you did not, Lord, you didn't withhold your only son, but gave him up for us all. Lord, thank you for Jesus and his faithfulness to, to follow through with his mission. To not abandon us, but to truly submit to your will and to face death, ridicule, Lord, 
Father, even as it is testified of old that he would come, Lord, thank you that you were faithful. And Lord, that by his wounds we are healed. Lord, help us to not forget the sacrifice that was given for us. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Join me as we read that glorious passage from Isaiah, the prophet, in chapter 53. Isaiah records, he was despised and rejected by men. A man of suffering who knew what sickness was. He was like someone people turned away from. He was despised. And we didn't value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. But in turn, we regarded him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our rebellion crushed because of our iniquity the punishment for our peace was on him and we are healed by his wounds we all like sheep have gone astray we've all turned to our own way and the lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all as we reflect on jesus sacrifice would you join me as we sing at the cross Alas, and did my Savior bleed. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote his Savior That I had done, he groaned upon that tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Drops of grief. But drops of grief can never repay. The debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. It's all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Truly, because of Jesus' death, we can rest assured that our sins have been paid for. That the penalty that was owed has been paid in full. We reflect on his death and sacrifice for us tonight, but we all know that looking forward to Sunday, we celebrate his glorious resurrection. That the power of sin and death did not contain him. But tonight, as we reflect... I also want us to spend time at the Lord's table because in the life of the church, our Savior has given us this, this meal, this, 
bread and cup to remember Christ's sacrifice for us, His forgiveness of our sin. I want to read to you the passage we read at least once a month. This is what Paul said about this meal. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself and in this way eat the bread and drink from the cup. Whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many are sick and ill among you and many have fallen asleep. If we were judging ourselves properly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned with the world. Brothers and sisters, this is a meal that we are given to remember Christ's death for us. It's a meal that we're given to remind us of His sacrifice, but also to drive us back to repentance. Tonight we have focused heavily on this aspect of the gospel that because of Christ's sacrifice we are called to confess our sins and trust that he will forgive us. So friends, I want us to do what we've done the past few Good Fridays. I'm going to uncover the table here and I'm going to give you an opportunity to just sit and pray. When you feel that that you are ready, when you've prepared yourself, I will invite you to come and, and take bread which is represents Christ's broken body for you to eat it to take the cup the fruit of the vine to to drink it and then as you do that if you would just do that on your way out as you leave in reverence and silence as we reflect on Christ's sacrifice for us so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pass the plate I'm not gonna ask you to come forward but when you're ready when you feel that you've prepared your heart would you come and and eat and drink and then depart, and we will worship and celebrate together on Sunday. And whenever you're ready, come and receive from the Lord's table.